Hello, my friend. Welcome to another episode of What's Up in Makeup, where I tell you everything that happened in the makeup and beauty industries this past week, as well as discuss all of the new product releases at Sephora, Ulta, and elsewhere. Today, we are going to be talking about Jamie Genevieve's brand, Vive Cosmetics, and the big, huge, giant news for them. Also, She Glam is now cruelty-free. How? How does that happen? I have issues. I have, I have a problem with this. <laughs> We're gonna go into that. We also have Heidi Klum with a very unique Halloween costume. Weird. And getting into the product report, exciting news for ColourPop on the drugstore front and a tribute from Sydney Grace to my friend Mel Thompson. All of that and so much more. Hang tight. We are getting into it right now. Before we get into all of the top news, we need to take just a moment to thank today's sponsor, which is Native Deodorant. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to my bathroom. Today's video is sponsored by Native Deodorants. If you did not know, back in 2019, I did a video exploring deodorants and I tried a bunch and it was not sponsored and I went through all kinds of things. I'll link the video down below. But what I ended up doing is I settled on Native as my favorite. So when Native reached out a few months later and asked to sponsor my video, I was so excited and I'm so excited that they continue to support my channel. One of the reasons why I continue to use Native deodorant is because I love the texture of it. It dries down very quickly. It goes on very easily and you only need the tiniest bit. Like you don't have to go to get enough deodorant on. You literally just go boop, Boop, done, that's it. Some people can even get away with just one whoop down and then you're done. Native deodorants are aluminum free, paraben free for those that are sensitive. They're also cruelty free and vegan. One of my favorite things about Native is they have really good classic scents like the coconut and vanilla, but they also come out with seasonal scents that are amazing. This is my new favorite. It's the buttercream and French vanilla. And it smells exactly like what you would think buttercream and French vanilla would smell like, but as a deodorant. This time when they sent me deodorant to re-up for this video, I chose again the coconut and vanilla. This one smells amazing as well. It's just got a little bit more of that coconut scent to go with the vanilla instead of the buttercream. I also chose the very traditional powder and cotton scent. I wanted to see whether this would be so familiar that people might, that maybe aren't sure about what scent to get. You could get something that you know is solid, something that you're used to. And powder and cotton is that nice, fresh, clean baby powder scent. But if you are looking for something different other than deodorant, they also have a ton of other products in including body wash, they have skincare, they have toothpaste, they have sunscreen, they have all kinds of stuff over there. Three deodorants over at Native by themselves is $39. With code GENLOVES9, you will get three deodorants for $26 instead. That is over a 33% off discount on the deodorants, but if you're not digging on that and you wanna try something else, the body washes and toothpaste, you can get 20% off with code GENLOVES9. So thank you again to Native for sponsoring this video. As always, I appreciate you oh so very much. And now my friend, it is time for what's up in makeup. I know, I know we are all exhausted by all of the influencer brands, celebrity brands popping up here, popping up there. It's like the most unlikely people. It's like, why are you coming out with skincare? I have absolutely no idea. But the reason why they're coming out with skincare is because it is profitable. And we have evidence for that in Jamie Genevieve this week. She is a Scottish influencer. I believe she started on YouTube, but now she's on Instagram. She is a makeup artist. And in 2020, she started a cosmetic brand called Vive Cosmetics. Last week, Jamie Genevieve sold a minority stake in Vive Cosmetics for 5.5 million pounds. That goes into roughly about $6.1 million, or in Canadian, that is $8.4 million. Like, what? And it is a minority stake. It's not even 
a majority stake, it is a minority stake. And this is huge for that company because they are looking to expand more, not only in the UK, but in the US and also in South Asia. There were four buyers, four big companies that invested in Vive that split that 5.5 million pound price tag. Two of those were early investors in Charlotte Tilbury. So they have some experience investing in brands that end up doing very well. So congratulations to Jamie Genevieve. I'm so excited for you. It's nice to see somebody that does seem like they have a passion for makeup come out with a makeup line and have it be successful. If you have been in the makeup space on TikTok, you are probably very familiar with Meredith Duxbury. She is the one that slathers foundation on her face more than I put peanut butter on my children's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I mean, it is a lot. So when I saw that she was going to be collaborating with a brand, I honestly thought it was gonna be foundation. Even though I, do you, have you ever done your makeup with all of the foundation? Have you ever tried it? Because it does look gorgeous on her, I have to admit. It's weird but it seems to work for her. Anyway, I digress. My point is, I thought that she was going to collab with a makeup company for foundation. Oh, but no, that is not what is happening. She's actually collaborating for Kiss Lashes' very first collaboration on a set of fake lashes. It is a limited edition holiday collection. And when Meredith was asked by the press what she thought about the collaboration, why she wanted to do it, she said, quote, I've been wearing Kiss Lashes for years and I'm so excited to be partnering with the brand on their first ever lash collaboration. I genuinely love the styles we designed and I'm so excited for everyone to finally check them out. So this is what she is offering. They are inspired by the 70s disco era and Meredith's quote, iconic glam makeup looks. The lashes focus on volume and fullness to create over the top looks because Meredith is very over the top. It makes perfect sense. There's eight different lash styles available. They're priced at $8.99 per pair and they are going to be found or actually are currently found in store and online at kissusa.com, Ulta, Walmart, CVS, and Walgreens. Congratulations, Meredith. I mean, she's got the magic. She's got the magic. People love her. I don't get the whole makeup application, but the woman's beautiful. She's gorgeous. I'm not surprised she's getting a collaboration. Lashes I didn't expect, but not surprised she's getting a collaboration. If you have been a longtime viewer of What's Up in Makeup, you may remember back in 2019, Elf Cosmetics was doing really, really bad. I remember talking about it and people being like, oh, well, it makes sense because they make crap products. <laughs> you remember, it wasn't even that long ago, it was 2019, because back then they did. They made very subpar products. In the spring of 2019, shares in Elf Beauty Inc. fell 14% after the adjusted earnings were below Wall Street expectations. They lost over 22 million dollars in restructuring expenses because they had to close all of their brick and mortar elf stores and sales overall were on the decline across the board but then but then the pandemic hit and all of the brands makeup brands are scrambling because they're having supply chain issues uh, makeup sales overall are down and it just looked really bad for elf and all of the beauty brands when this global pandemic we didn't know what was happening and it's like everything was all crazy and messed up and everything beauty brands like becca bh cosmetics bite beauty all either filed for bankruptcy or completely went out of business and that's just the bees. <laughs> there were a lot of other makeup brands that just struggled through that whole process. But Elf seemed to pull it out. They seemed to pull it out. And this is what I think they did right. They were, to my knowledge, the first brand to do a truly weird collaboration that was actually real and not an April Fool's joke in that Elf and Chipotle collection. That was huge. It was freaking everywhere. It made mainstream out of makeup, the makeup space news. And what they also did was they reformulated a lot of their products and made them so much better. And when reviews were coming out across platforms, Instagram, the new boom of TikTok on YouTube, people were really loving the new Elf stuff and people were bringing in less money. They wanted good, cheap, 
easy to find makeup that they could count on and e.l.f. was there to fill that hole. e.l.f. is currently thriving. Every report that comes out, including the most recent, is showing incredible growth. So for the three months ending on September 30th, net sales for e.l.f. increased 30% to mark their 15th consecutive quarter of net sales growth. Their CEO, his name is Charanga Min, he said that he thinks the pandemic really strengthened the sales for e.l.f., where it really hurt a lot of other beauty brands. Net sales for e.l.f. are expected to be around the $480 million dollar mark. That is a hell of a lot of putty primers and camo concealers, but, but that just shows you don't have to have a very high price point on a product in order to make a lot of money. Estee Lauder confuses me because it seems like on some weeks and some reports that they're doing very, very well. You know, they're looking at starting Beaumont Beauty. They were talking about buying Tom Ford, uh, the whole shebang of Tom Ford and not just running their beauty line. But now the report is coming out that Estee Lauder is not doing as well as expected. Their net sales are down 11% from $4.39 billion to $3.93 billion. And I know that seems, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. But you think about the number of brands brands that they own and where like e.l.f. is just one brand, it, it makes a difference. I mean, they all add up individually. Net earnings also declined to $489 million. That's down from $692 million in the same period last year. But part of this, it's really important to note, is because the U.S. dollar is worth different than it was around the world this time last year. Estee Lauder is saying that the biggest reason that things are declining for them is because of their selling in China and the things that are going on there. COVID-related restrictions regarding travel, tourism, prolonged store closures, and the tightening of inventory by certain retailers is really messing them up. The segment that was the most affected was their skincare segment. They also say that their company was negatively impacted by inflationary pressure and recession concerns in the U.S. I find it interesting when they break it down by which brands are doing good and which brands are bringing them down. So this is the tea on that. Growing brands for the company are La Mer, Bobby Brown, and The Ordinary, but the gains in those companies were balanced by the losses of the Estee Lauder brand, Dr. Jart, and Origins. Makeup sales also decreased 6%. The most growth was from MAC Cosmetics, which makes sense. They've come up with a lot more interesting products lately, but that was offset by Estee Lauder Cosmetics and Tom Ford Beauty. Overall, the highest gain of each category was actually in the hair care department, and they said Aveda is the big reason for that. So I will keep my eye on Estee Lauder. I am absolutely fascinated watching this company, like, and the choices they make, and the ups and the downs. It's like a roller coaster. It's very interesting. Speaking of downs... <laughs> We are back again with your weekly Revlon's in Trouble update. Uh, it's bad. It's very bad. Revlon is dying, but it is not quite dead yet. They are looking for a buyer now at this point. Like, seriously, looking for a buyer. Like, they need a buyer right now. They began the process of soliciting bids for their assets as time ticks toward when they have to do this, like, renegotiation thing. It's in, like, two weeks. Along with that, Revlon's feeling the heat from their creditors, so they are threatening a lawsuit resulting from financial choices that Revlon made before they filed for bankruptcy. So that's a whole nother thing. According to Bloomberg, the company started sending non-disclosure agreements to potential bidders and vetting third parties who are interested in buying the company. U.S. bankruptcy judge David S. Jones said at a recent hearing, quote, deadlines breed creativity and solutions. They are what they are, and I am hoping to see creativity and solutions. <laughs> Like, it's like, you know, if we don't put a deadline on this, then they're just going to twiddle their thumbs and not think it's important. So we're putting a deadline on it and you better get creative or else things are going to go very bad very quickly. So we will see how creative Revlon can get. I, it is not looking good, but I will be following it and I will let you know when I know. Cruelty-free consumers are often very familiar with the Leaping Bunny program. It is, by Cruelty Free International, is considered the gold standard of cruelty-free. Because like PETA, they don't really like do anything to make sure that the companies that are PETA certified cruelty-free are actually cruelty-free. You just have to be like, hey, dude, I'm cruelty-free. And PETA's like, cool, you know, here's our bunny on, a, on your package. Like, go for it. But Cruelty-Free International and Leaping Bunny, you have to go through more than that. You have to set up a supplier monitoring system 
system to make sure that all your third-party vendors are following cruelty-free rules. And you also have to be open to ongoing audits. Plus, you have to pay a fee, and it's a whole freaking process. But as a reminder, <laughs> cruelty-free does not mean free from cruelty, is what it comes down to. I've done tons of videos on this. I'll link one or two of them down below. It literally just means the product was not tested on animals, period. It doesn't mean that it's vegan. It doesn't mean it doesn't contain animal products. And it has nothing to do with the way that the humans are treated in the manufacturing facilities. She Glam, who is the sister company to Shein, is now Leaping Bunny certified cruelty free. They are owned by parent company Zotop Business Company LTD. They were under fire about two weeks ago for human rights violations in their factories. UK broadcaster Channel 4 sent in a essentially a spy to check out and videotape what was happening in the Shein factory and it was really bad. The undercover worker found out that workers receive a base salary of 4,000 won per month which is roughly about $556 USD but it is important to know that cost of living near this factory in uh, Guangzhou is very much cheaper than it is in the U.S. So it is just considered an extremely low pay. I'll put a resource down below. I looked up the cost of living in that area and they say for a single person it's about $515 a month but that's before rent. So to me what that sounded like is it's almost like working at like a Walmart something like that. But what makes it different is what they're actually expected to do and it's pretty awful. So they must make 500 pieces of clothing per day and they also work up to 18 hours in a day with only one day off per month. If they make a mistake on a clothing item, they could be fined two thirds of their day's wage for that mistake. The undercover worker that they sent in saw women washing their hair in the sinks during their lunch break, which I think also speaks to the quality of these people's lives just trying to make enough money to get by. Beyond this particular exposure, Shein has been under fire multiple times for many things, including the poor working conditions before, along with worker exposure to toxic chemicals, copying independent designer items, and mishandling of customer data from their website. Now, She Glam, the makeup company, is technically a different company than Shein, but I personally, like, I feel like there needs to be something like Leaping Bunny certification for human rights. Like, that needs to exist because this is just, it's just not okay. Especially a company like She Glam and She In that they make so much money. They can afford to pay their workers a little bit more, give them a little more time off. It's just awful. And what, what really got under my skin was that the fact that they are now Leaping Bunny certified cruelty free. And I know that that's not the same thing, but it's like, it, there's just a contradiction there that I don't like. It sits wrong with me when they can be so cruel to the people that are working there. As you know, Halloween just passed and I feel like we all kind of have our own feeling about Halloween. Either we, you know, really like dressing up. It's like a huge holiday. I know people that just, they look forward to it every single year. And then there are people that are just like, meh, whatever. I don't care. It's just a whole nother day. And there are two celebrities I wanted to highlight that kind of show that contrast. So the first one is Kim Kardashian. And I just felt so bad for her because this is my literal worst nightmare when it comes to Halloween is that a couple days before Halloween, she went to Tracy Ellis Roth's birthday party and she went in full costume as Mystique and it turns out it was not a costume party and she is just decked out. Like, what a nightmare. Like, the only thing worse is, like, being in your underwear in front of a group of people. Like, are you kidding me? Like, that is so freaking embarrassing. I feel so bad for her. On the flip side, model Heidi Klum is known for her amazing costumes and the Halloween party that she throws every year. So she had a couple years where she didn't have the party in 2020 and 2021. So she's been thinking about this costume for literally two years and she wore it. She decided she was going to be a giant worm. And that's what she was. She was a giant worm. And I was like, this is a supermodel. And she does not look like a supermodel. Like, I love that for her. I love that this is just the weirdest freaking costume ever. In an interview, Heidi said, quote, I like to do something unexpected. So I tried to think of a costume that's super absurd, but also very familiar. So her husband dressed up as a mangled fisherman, like his eyeballs all hanging out and stuff. And he's got his fishing rod and everything. And then she would be the bait. The first thing I thought of when I saw this costume is 
was like, how is she moving in this? Like, how is she going to party wearing this? Like, how is she going to walk around? How is she going to talk to people? Like, she can barely function. Well, she did end up taking it off and she had this like really skimpy, like glittery bodysuit on underneath. I mean, she had her face makeup on, which almost looked like bacon at that point. <laughs> but, you know, she did She did end up taking it off. It was just, a, it's a real weird costume. But I give her props for being unique because she's come up with some really cool costume ideas in the past. And I have literally never seen this in my entire life. I, I mad props to her and her team for putting this together. Let us go ahead and move on to the product report and talk about what is happening in products this week, starting with ColourPop. Huge, huge news for ColourPop. They are going to be for a limited time in Target stores. At least for now, they say it's a limited time. I have a feeling it's not going to be limited. Like they're going to have this limited run and then they're going to probably go in there permanently because chances are, I have a feeling it's really going to sell there. The limited edition ColourPop and Target collection is going to be available on November 6th. I think that's today. Today, available today. Lauren Nelson, who is the president of Seed Beauty, told Pop Sugar, quote, we created the Color Pop for Target collection to include our iconic Color Pop formulas and bestsellers and added some newness that Target shoppers and avid beauty lovers alike will love. So there's gonna be nine pan eyeshadow palettes, lippy sticks, super shock highlighters, and more prices are going to stay below $18, which I think is really key for that market. The plan is for the collection to be out of stores February 20th. 25th, but it is one of those while supplies last things. So we will see what ends up happening with that. Honestly, I think that they're going to end up selling out of this and then they're just going to immediately put more stuff in and it's just going to be a permanent fixture in Target. That's my prediction. My friend Mel Thompson passed away in September of 2021 and she was such a, an incredible person and she made such an impact on the beauty space. Before she passed away, she had come out with an eyeshadow palette with Sydney Grace Cosmetics and it was it's still an incredible incredible eyeshadow palette well Sydney Grace decided they wanted to do something else to honor Mel Sydney Grace is coming out with the Mel Thompson version of the retro glam palette the bundle will be called in Mel's memory I'm trying to hold it together it launches on Monday at 9 a.m pacific daylight time will include 20 single shadows the price for the entire bundle is $60 and the bundle is only going to be available for a limited time there are are going to be singles available of the shades as well. They're going to be at a discounted price, which is $3.50 each. And the singles will be available for that price until November 14th. Mel's husband, Eric, was involved in the process and he did give Sydney Grace permission to release this bundle. A percentage of each bundle or shadow will go toward Mel's family, Eric, and the kids. Every time I see Mel's face, I get sad because she was such, such, such a light in this space. So I definitely wanted to mention it, even though it's like I'm I can feel myself I can feel myself I'm gonna go ahead and move on to dose of colors now because I love that woman so much she was an incredible human being dose of colors came out with their glam to the nines collection it's two nine pan palettes called nine years ago and nine years later there's also two eyeliners in black and brown and four hint of tint lip oils in natural shades influencer brand wise Nikki tutorials Nimya beauty I, I know people were surprised that Nikki didn't start with an eyeshadow palette but apparently Apparently there is an eyeshadow palette coming now. To find out more details about it, you can stay tuned to their Instagram or to What's It Been Makeup. You can subscribe and I will tell you when I know more. This is an interesting product. So Tarte came out with Maracuja Juicy Lip and Cheek Shifts. They're pH adjusting lip glosses in six different shades. They're $24 each. Apparently they all adjust to the exact same shade, but it looks like they're in six different fruity flavors. And I think that's why you would buy all of them is just to have different flavors, but they just know they're all gonna be the exact same thing as shade. This is really beautiful. Nomad Cosmetics Christmas Cheer Palette, $29. It is limited edition. There is a maximum on that of two per customer. So I guess if you were buying gifts, you could only buy two. I am a big Wizard of Oz fan, not quite as much as Alice in Wonderland, but I love Wizard of Oz. Kylie Cosmetics is collabing with the Wizard of Oz. The collection is gorgeous. The promos are gorgeous. It is launching on November 10th. There's a brush set. There's an eye and face pressed powder palette, matte lip paint set, metallic lipstick, and a transformative lip tint in that collection. Dominique Cosmetics launched a new palette called the Essential Palette. It launched on Friday. There's 10 shades. They say, quote, whether you're going for a chill, all natural, clean girl look, 
or giving drama with a fierce face, she's got you covered and ready to glow. It's a beautiful palette, beautiful natural palette. I love the Hindash Boy Tears. It is one of my favorite highlighters of all time. Now Hindash has expanded on that line with other products. There are four new shades. They say that they, you can blend them on the eyes, cheeks, and lips for full monochromatic looks, or you can use them alone for bold color impact or mix in with base products and balms for a custom finish. Those are $25 each. I think I might get some of those because I love Boy Tears so much and I'm so curious about this formula. Sephora and Ulta were so much more calm this week. It was so nice. It was so nice. It was like nice and chill. So just three new things over at Sephora. We have the Benefit Mini Sincerely Yours Beauty Advent Calendar Set. It's $65. There's 12 doors. They open and reveal four different mini mascaras, three brow products, two primers, a bronzer, a blush, and the roller liner. The only other set at Sephora was the Iconic London Mini Glow Icons Highlighter Set. It's $27. It's a liquid highlighter and a makeup fixing spray. They're both mini, so I did the math on it. The highlighter is $8.30 worth of product compared to the full size, and the fixing spray is $7.25 of the full size. So that's $15.55 worth of product for $27. So essentially, you're not getting a deal with this sometimes they give you like a, a deal like when you get like Sephora mini sets usually the value is way higher than what the cost of the products inside is if you compare them to full size this is not like that so the only reason why you would want to buy this is if you just don't want to try the full size you don't want to spend that much and you just want to try the product and you don't care that you're not getting a lot of product in there and then last at Sephora makeup by Mario ethereal eyes eyeshadow palette it is a whopping $68 holy Holy crap. It's a natural palette, right? But it it's pretty. It's pretty for a natural palette. It looks got a nice gradient from deep to light. It's got some foil looking shades in there. Mario's really good at designing shades that really go well together. So I uh, don't think I'm going to get this because I don't need another natural palette, but I think this would make a really nice gift for someone that needs an eyeshadow palette that's probably going to be relatively foolproof and also very natural. Moving over to Ulta, just two things. Two things. And we've talked about both of them. We have the MAC and Black Panther collection is now over at Ulta. There's the eyeshadow palette, the extra dimension skin finish, and lip products and brushes and stuff. Price range is from $23 to $44. $44 is the skin finish, not the eyeshadow palette, which I think is a little weird. But it's beautiful. I kind of get it. And then, of course, those Kiss Meredith Duxbury lashes for $8.99 each. Those are over at Ulta as well. All right, my friend, PR purchase product of the week. I actually didn't see this on my feed, but they sent it to me in PR and that's how I know about it. This is the Sigma Beauty Holiday Glam Set. This just launched on November 1st. So on my eyes today, I use the eyeshadow palette. It's right here. This shade right here that's on the middle of my lid. Oh my gosh, it is nuts. Absolutely nuts. Look at this. I have to swatch it for you because it is so freaking beautiful. And of course you can build it to full opacity so you can like tap it on your lid and make it just be a little bit of sparkle or you can all the way foil it up. Like what? Are you kidding me? Uh, and then this one right here really matches my sweater really nicely. I have that on the outer corner. It's just so beautiful. Sigma really knocked it out of the park with this. This is the first time I've used it, so I can't speak to lasting power, but application was gorgeous. I also used the new highlighter and blush palette. It looks like this. Let me swatch that for you too. Hold on, too much stuff happening. The eyeshadow palette comes with this little brush that I use today, that's why it's dirty. And then the highlighter and blush palette comes with this. So the highlighter is called Frosty Glow and the blush is called Sweater Weather. Oh my gosh, just so freaking gorgeous. Really, really beautiful. Also in the collection for lip products, there's some minis. This is the Lovable Little Lip Duo. And then there's the Snow Kiss Hydrating Lip Duo. This has a lip balm and a lip oil. And then for brushes, there's this little gift set that has two little mini brushes and a makeup bag. And then this one has a face brush and two eye brushes. And then finally, this one has a bigger makeup bag and then it has two face brushes 
brushes and three eye brushes. And I love the eye brushes they included. It's great for travel because you've got, you know, a powder brush here, a blush and highlighter brush here, and then you've got a blending brush and then a brush to pack color on the lid and then like a brush you can use for brows or lower lash line or whatever, like a little angled detailing brush. So very nice collection there. If you saw my Instagram story, you know, I got the Shrek Ever After collection from Revolution. And honestly, there was one thing that I really wanted from this collection. For fun, let's do a one, two, three, ding. Yes, yes. They're Shrek ears. And yes, I love them. And yes, I use them today. This is the only thing though, is it squeezing my skull. Like I feel like my brains are gonna just ooze out my ears. It is really tight. So, and I don't even have that big of a head. I actually have a relatively small head. So if you have a bigger head than me, this is probably gonna be awfully uncomfortable, but I like it. And I'm gonna keep using it even though it is squishing my brain. <laughs> I also used today a couple of other products from the collection. I wanted to use the highlighter, but unfortunately it's too deep for me. Wah, wah, wah. So I just used it a little bit back here. So this is the Sigma highlighter. And then I just used a little bit of this back here because it's just, it's not the right shade for me. Selfishly, I did want it to be the right shade. But what I will say for it that I love is it smells like gingerbread. It smells really good. It's more cinnamon than gingerbread actually, but let me swatch that so you can see what we're dealing with. I'll probably end up using it as a single shadow or I'll pass it on to a friend. I also used on my lips today, the Dunky Lipstick. This is so creamy. It's got a little bit of a fruity scent of all things. I'll swatch it here for you so you can see what it looks like. It is very creamy, definitely not transfer proof in any way, uh, but it does feel really comfortable. After I put that on, I put on a little bit of the frosty glow in the middle of my lips and I think my lips look real juicy and pretty today. I'm very excited about this lip look. I'm gonna be wearing this a lot. We talked about this last week, but I do wanna show you, there's the two little mini eyeshadow palettes. And on Instagram, I said I didn't know what they look like, but there's literally a picture in the corner there. I don't know what I was thinking. There's also a big giant eyeshadow palette. There's the colors there on the back. This is the eyeshadow palette I'm probably gonna keep out of all of them just because I can't use all these eyeshadow palettes. I, I want I need to pass them on because there's just no way. But yeah, it's really cute. Can you see? Oh, there you go. Isn't it cute? She changes. It's adorable. And that's what it looks like on the inside. Just really fun where you could create some natural looks or you could go really bold. Uh, and I'm gonna have fun playing with this. Hopefully the quality is okay because sometimes Makeup Revolution is not that great a quality. But I will let you know. I will keep you posted. And then I am going to open up this brush set. I've never tried Revolution brushes, so this is a good time. I love the little magic wands. They're really cute. So yes, I will keep you posted on all of this. Favorites and fails for November. I'm sure some of this will show up. Notable sales this week. Just a reminder that the Sephora sale is going on. It is a progressive sale depending on your level of membership over there. Whether you're a beauty insider, you'll get 10% off. VIB gets 15% off and Rouge gets 20% off. But then just a reminder that last year after the sale ended, they gave 20% off to everybody. I don't know if they're doing it again this year. I have no idea. I got my 15% off because there were things I needed to re-up on, a couple things I was interested in buying. Uh, so I already got my stuff, but in case you are not hard pressed over making sure you get that discount, you may want to wait and see if they give 20% off to everybody because I have a feeling they're going to do that again. Over at Ulta, they are having some early Black Friday deals. Uh, there's themed discounts that are happening for periods of time. So the deal with that is, is that November 10th through the 14th, it's going to be $15 off select cleansers. And November 17th through the 19th, they have $10 select travel size products and 40 40% off of hair tools. And finally, my friend, let us talk about our artist shout out of the week. We are talking about Laura today. She is from Belgium and she goes by kind underscore madness. Lots of really creepy Halloween stuff, like really creepy. And I don't want to freak anybody out. So if you want to see the real creepy stuff, go over to her Instagram. I'm, gonna, I'm showing you the less creepy stuff. So let's start with a look number one. This one is called Toxicity on Board Hesiodis. I don't know how to say that word. I Googled it, I spelled it out, and I still don't think I'm saying it right. But I didn't know what that meant. So I looked it up and apparently that is a crater on the moon, but it is also seems to be promotion for an eyeshadow palette that came out from a company called Martine Cosmetics. But I wanted to highlight it because I think it looks really freaking cool. Uh, the cracks are cool, but what I think really sets this off for me is the highlight placement under the cracks. And it sets that really neat contrast. It also looks like she has a green light shining on her face. And I feel like that accentuates the whole 
whole look. I also really like the blush placement and the smoky halo eye. Really, really gorgeous there. Second look, skipping past all the Halloween stuff because it was super disturbing, if I'm going to be very honest. It translated from French, this one is called One Day I Will Marry an Angel. She could have gone really harsh on the edges for this, but I really like that she went soft with it, especially with the angels in the corners. I also love the subtle cut crease and the more natural lashes paired with that bold red lip as a contrast. Really gorgeous there. And then finally, I really wanted to show you one of her special effects looks, so I picked a less creepy one. This is I Am Groot. <laughs> That's what she calls it because she turned herself into Groot, and it's just so cool. She did such a great job. I especially love the hollowing of the eyes and the texture on the neck, but the whole thing is just absolutely gorgeous, and she's so talented. Not nearly enough followers. I highly recommend you go check out her page. Her Instagram will be linked down below. I just followed her, and I hope that you consider following her too. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. Of course, as always, thank you to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you for all of your submissions this week. I appreciate you. You helped me to make sure I don't miss some of these really great launches that sometimes, I mean, I'm one person. So it's great to have you kind of as my safety net to make sure I've got everything. So really, really appreciate you being there. Our chat today is going to be at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time, not 10 a.m., 5 p.m. Eastern time. I do have a morning market at the Only Farmers Market if you want to drop by and say hi. But if you are not in the area, I will say hi to you at 5 p.m. in live chat and we'll talk makeup. We'll talk things happening in the industry. But if you can't even make it to that, that's no problem. It's very easy to find that on the replay. It's You can listen to it like a podcast. All you need to do is go over to my channel page, click on the video titled live chat. But if you are subscribed, it'll be even easier for you because you just need to go over to your subscription feed and it should be right there. Thank you again so much for spending time with me. I appreciate it. If you would like to spend a little bit more time, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch, including last week's episode of What's Up in Makeup in case you missed it. But if you do need to go, it is no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did and mad love to you and I will see you in a video very, very soon.